text chain on my front porch swing. Smell of shrimp there again at a bar. Wasted away again in my garden. All right. I'm going to put together a six inch dry cell hydrogen generator. The components that I've got here are fairly common with these dry cells. Everything has been laser cut. 316 L stainless steel. Lasers make it a lot easier because you don't have to stamp or pay for an expensive stamp. These lasers are really quick and efficient. They cut these things out uh, really fast. And you just clean them up. Everything's been washed. Normally I have gloves on. However, I wash my hands with alcohol. There's no oil residue. These are not stainless steel bolts. They're not necessary. As long as you put a sleeve on it. I just use a piece of 3 8 tubing to keep it from making contact with the plates whenever it's assembled. Make sure that you use Teflon tape on all the fittings. Uh, whether you think it needs it or not, uh, you can't never be too careful. And to go ahead and take care of a problem that might leak afterwards ahead of time. A little preventative maintenance there. So let's get started. First, we take the bottom plate and our bolts. Stick the bolts through the holes. So, actually I could probably turn it over and do it faster this way. Strip them in all the holes all the way around. In total, this is just to make it easier to flip it over. Taking note that the porthole is toward me so that the next plate instead of being in the same line of the same will be at the top. I'll set this plate up here and I'll up. First we're going to start off with a gasket. First few that you put on that went on very easy. The first few you put on usually doesn't go that easy. Keeping in mind that the porthole is the bottom on this one you want to turn the plates. I actually should have them all turned. Like I say, you normally would wear gloves, but make sure that you've got clean hands. Put your first one in place. So here comes the fun part, getting it to drop. But once you do, notice the tab for the connection is on this side. Come back with another gasket. These plates have already been cleaned, sanded, and cleaned again. Come back with a second plate. Drop it down. Go with another gasket. Another plate. Alternating every other plate. You could put all the connections on one side, but that would not give you enough room to make your connections your electrical connections. We want to use 10 gauge wire so it won't get hot. <coughs> Go with another gasket. Another plate. I used 100 grit sandpaper. I actually put it in a, a jig sander and that made it a lot easier on my hands. I seem to have done a, a fairly good job. I have one extra plate here. I have several extra plates, but put that plate to the side. You end with a gasket just like you began with a gasket. Remembering to put the, when I put the other end on it, I'm keeping the hole on this one at the top. Remember the other one was at the bottom. That's for the fill up. This is for the exhaust side. This is where the gas is coming out of. Come back and put washers. You can use lock washers, but I'm using 
Just small fender washers for now. Another design is for the 8 inch plates, which would require an extra 4 holes to be drilled, or in this case, cut with a laser. As you saw in the last video. Cat-like reflexes. And when you're putting these, when you are torquing these, and I'm just doing it hand tight right now, but when you go to torque these, make sure you do it more in a star pattern, like you would be doing if you were changing a tire on a car or putting a wheel back on a car. What that does is it ensures that you're getting even pressure all the way around. You don't ever want to over tighten this material for a gasket or any other material for a gasket as you're liable to damage the gasket. And believe me, it's nothing more aggravating than to fill these things up with electrolyte and have to go back and tear it back apart to repair a little bit of a small problem with your gasket. And as you go back, you'll start to notice that you can turn some of them because of the way you've tightened them. Just double check everything. There is the stale part of it. And I've already taken the liberty of putting Teflon tape on these, as I said earlier, and for these particular fittings, uh, these fittings are, uh, I think it's half inch, uh, anyway that's what that was, and I tapped it out, and they should go on in there, no problem really, line up very well, and once you put the uh, Teflon tape on there, there's nothing like a trusty Craftsman 5 8 wrench. I'm going to turn it around. Do the same thing here. This one's not as tight. This being the top where the gas will come out. And this is the end that will go out to your bubbler. These connections here or you can choose hot, negative, hot, negative, or you can have your neutrals in here. Uh, if you've watched any of these videos on YouTube, uh, then you know that by playing around with these um, setups that you'll get different production. Uh, your electrolyte's going to make a big difference. Uh, but have fun. Be careful. Whatever you do, use caution. Use common sense. And that's about it for today.